welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology we have been talking about the different types of PCR reactions and in this video I will be talking about touchdown PCR now what is touchdown PCR this is a variety of PCR technique which is produced to minimize the amplification of unwanted DNA products because this is the curse to normal PCR reaction that if the primer annealed to any non-specific region of the target DNA that can amplify some non-specific DNA elements that we don't need. So how to minimize that effect? There are several ways to minimize that. Nested PCR is one of the type to minimize that. Touchdown is another type. Now for understanding touchdown PCR you need to understand two fundamental concepts regarding the polymerase chain reaction. Let's talk about that. The first thing that I should talk about is, is normally the process of PCR works in a very simple fashion that you have a target DNA. Let's say this is the target DNA portion which I draw with this dotted, uh, this thick line and the thinner lines are the flanking elements surrounding the target DNA. Now we design primer that binds to this flanking regions of the target DNA. Let's say this is the primer and then we have a polymerase enzyme that amplifies that that extend that primer to amplify the fragment that is the overall process of PCR now during this process of primer there is a one in very important thing between primer and DNA annealing and normally this annealing take place right after the denaturation process because you know at the very beginning we increase the temperature in PCR reaction so that the double strands of the DNA are separated then we allow the primers to anneal to the target region. Now this is called the annealing and for annealing to occur we need to lower the temperature down to approximately 50 to 55 degrees Celsius or even kind of related to less than 60 degrees Celsius at this range. This is very important range uh, for making them uh, to properly interact. So this is the time, this temperature is very important. Now once we low this temperature, annealing can take place. Now there are two things about temperature that I should talk about. Temperature is based on the composition of the primer and mostly the composition of the primer because the length of the primer is approximately 15 to 20 nucleotides long which is kind of a universal in most of the cases. But the composition of the primer depends on the melting temperature of the primer known as Tm. Now what happens actually, the melting temperature of primer means at which temperature the primer will dissociate from the bound DNA, okay. And that is called annealing temperature. Annealing temperature is the temperature at which the primer can successfully bind to the target DNA. Remember, annealing temperature means successfully bind, melting temperature means successfully fall off. Now, there should be a balance between this melting temperature for that primer and the annealing temperature for that primer. Now, always this, this melting temperature that, that which we know of, this annealing temperature should be less uh, than uh, the melting temperature because uh, otherwise the primer will never attach. So we need to give a temperature at which uh, the primer can properly attach uh, to, the, to the target DNA. So what happens actually, the range of the temperature that we usually go for the annealing is 55 to 60 degrees Celsius temperature. Now what happens if we allow lower annealing temperature, let's say it's like 45 to 48 degrees Celsius, that annealing temperature is very well for the primers to be attached to the target DNA or the regions of the DNA. And this is actually so good and preferable temperature that the primer not only can bind with the target but it may also bind with some other segment of the DNA as well or it might also bind with own primers as well to form primer dimer, okay. So remember as we low down the temperature we are favoring annealing. So if we favor annealing more that are going to give us some wrong and bad effect side effects like formation of primer dimers and, and binding of the primers to unspecific locations. But if we maintain this annealing temperature very close to the melting temperature of the primer, that is not allowing, that will never allow the primer to bind to any other place. 
as let's say for example the melting temperature of a primer is 60 degrees celsius now if we maintain the annealing temperature at 58 degrees celsius in that case that mean that does not mean that 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 in this case these primers will not that much eager to bind with any place because there are very narrow gap between the melting temperature and the annealing temperature so they are not that crazy to bind in this case what will happen they will bind but only when they find proper pairing capability they will only bind when they find proper base pairing they will not bind any unwanted base pairing there okay so as we keep this annealing temperature very really close to the melting temperature for the first round of the pcr reaction that will allow all those primers to be properly placed to the to the locations that we want them to bind and then what happens the round of uh, pcr will take place and then after each round of each round of application goes by we decrease the temperature we decrease the annealing temperature a little bit now what is the reason for that because remember pcr works like the amplification of a target region after the amplification that fragment will be taken as a target and again the further amplification so if at the very first level we fish out all the targeted region of the dna in the later rounds we don't need to bother about unwanted binding because unwanted binding will not possible in the later rounds because if they fish out the proper target sequence at the very first rounds then then we already have I have just uh, listed out the unwanted binding capabilities then only the proper binding will take place so it is very important to maintain that annealing temperature very close to the melting temperature for the primers at the very first few cycles but as it goes by we can decrease that annealing temperature down so that uh, it can bind with uh, like ease it can bind with more ease in the future and that will give us most of the uh, most of the better quality of the targeted dna which will only carry target dna which will not contain any of the unwanted portion of the dna well it minimizes that now it might happen like in some cases this temperature close to the melting temperature will not allow the primers to properly attach at the very beginning part of the pcr reaction but slowly as it goes by it will produce the targeted dna sequences and that will be very much specific now if you look at here in this this process it is listed like it starts with uh, the 94 degrees celsius which is a denaturation temperature then it starts with 58 degrees celsius temperature as an annealing temperature but as it goes by in the in like 20 cycles for each of those 20 cycle it decrease this this uh, temperature of annealing like 0.7 degrees celsius decrease for each of the stages for example after few cycles it reaches 48 degrees celsius only and then it will keep maintain that uh, for the rest of the cycles so this is the idea of touch down pcr we start with a high temperature of annealing then as we go by we decrease it slowly for facilitating the binding and it will help generating proper targeted dna sequences and exclude all the unwanted dna products so this is another example given for the same type of touchdown pcr as you see annealing temperature is very high 67 degrees celsius temperature at first 14 cycles considerably reducing every cycle 0.7 point uh, like 0.7 degrees celsius reducing for every cycle then after that it comes down to kind of 56 degrees celsius so kind of 8 to 9 degrees celsius temperature falls by as the cycle goes by that's the idea of touchdown pcr I hope you understand the process of touchdown PCR. If you like this, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that, and definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.